Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 565. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to become a millionaire with very little money. This article comes to us from the Financial Express, printed on msn.com's website, and it was written by Raul Argerwal. And it says, who doesn't want to be a millionaire? That too, without money. Being rich, in fact, is usually the dream of every person. Whilst we all aspire to be rich, but very few among us are really able to accumulate extraordinary wealth. And then we tend to believe that millionaires are born, not made. However, this perception is not entirely true. Not all millionaires have inherited their wealth. In fact, there are equally good number of people who have been able to make a lot of money without inheritance or upfront investment. When we say it is possible to be a self-made millionaire with no money, we in no way are propounding a get-rich-quick money-making scheme or espousing something that is not within the framework of the legal system. It is absolutely possible to become a millionaire from ground up without any money, but there is no shortcut to this process. There are plenty of real life examples of people who have made it big through their own efforts. They have done it without, very little, or no money, but the common theme among all these people is an attitude to triumph, persevere, dedication, and a single-minded focus to achieve their goals. J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, is one of the most successful authors of all times, who achieved the fame by putting her skill to work despite facing several hardships in life. It is almost impossible to believe that only 20 years ago, Joanne Rowling and her child relied on government welfare to survive, but now she has a net worth of more than $1 billion. Leon Charney is another such example. His current net worth is more than $1.3 billion. He is a master investor and an expert of Middle Eastern geopolitics. It is said that he started his career with only $200. He invested in himself, became an expert, and began to offer his guidance for a fee. He also invested his own money in the right places, and his fortune grew from a few hundred dollars to billions. Okay, I want to pause there. I think he mistitled this article. I think he's saying how to start with no money and become a billionaire because obviously those two are billionaire examples, which is like an example I had in my book. You're already a wealth heiress. Now think and act like one because in that book, I talk about people who started with very little means but grew into millions or billions such as Zhao Quinfei, who was making a dollar an hour and became the richest woman in the world. So he's going to go on with some more billionaire examples. Let's see what he has to say. Who does not know Oprah Winfrey, the legendary talk show queen? Her current net worth of nearly $2.9 billion puts her in the top list of celebrity billionaires. While growing up, her family was unable to afford for their basic living needs, Her story exemplifies sheer hard work and focus to achieve one's goals. Oprah followed her dream of being a talk show host, graduated to becoming a news reporter in Tennessee. After that, she started her own talk show and struck gold. She expanded her enterprise to include holdings and investments in media firms and eventually built a billion-dollar portfolio. Howard Schultz is another such example. Like other self-made billionaires, his current net worth is $2 $2 billion. He too belonged to a poor family. He was passionate about entrepreneurship and was good at sports. His sports scholarship led him to the University of Michigan. Thereafter, equipped with the necessary skill set, he had the courage to venture out and start his own coffee establishment that is today known as Starbucks. These are just a few examples among many, but the most common thing is that each one of the above 
had a very humble beginning. They made it out of their hard work, grit, and dedication. The ways to become a self-made millionaire and the ways to earn money are altogether different things. You can earn money through several hundred ways. You can join a regular job with a high paying check. You can earn money through various online stuff. You can monetize your master skills or you can start your own business. But to become a self-made successful rich person, you must have to follow a few basic rules. And in fact, much of the success will have nothing to do with money. And the most important part is that the journey has to begin with the right mindset, attitude, people skills, cash management, and other good habits. All right, I want to pause there. Well, he said a lot, and I do agree. It doesn't always take money to make money. Other people can provide the money if you provide the hard work or the skill set. One example would be, let's say you want to flip houses. One partner has the money, the other partner has the skill set and hires the contractors or does the work themselves and then gets the property sold and you split the profits. One had skills, the other had the money, and they both come together in a perfect partnership. That's an example of not needing any money in order to create money. So it's possible to not need any money, but you do have to have some sort of skills or talents. I like the fact that, of course, he mentioned the right mindset, and that has a lot to do with it. It's what you believe to be true. If you believe that you could do that, if you believe you could find that partner, to do that. There's all sorts of mindset that just goes into the example I just gave you. Someone starting out is going to have to have a positive mindset in order to have all of those things work out right and to complete that deal. But it is possible, absolutely, and people are doing it every single day. So let's see what traits he thinks are most important for up and coming young millionaires and billionaires. He goes on to say, following are some of the common traits which all successful people who have risen from very humble beginnings possess. First is focus and discipline. Rather than focusing on money, focus on your goal to achieve success and money will follow. If you know what you want and then have the discipline to go after it, don't get sidetracked by less important matters. You may cut expenses or better yet, look for ways to increase your income to meet your goal, but you must have to stick with your goal to become a millionaire. Second, put your skill to work that you love to do and chase your dreams. If your aspiration to start your own business or work is motivated just because you don't like to work for someone else or are not getting enough pay, then it's likely that you will not go too far in life. To get success, it is crucial to focus on your passion. Choose something that you are passionate about and love to do. I want to pause there and say, absolutely, I agree with that. Because if you love to do something, it's not going to feel like work. And that's the easiest thing of all to do. It's something that you love and you enjoy anyway. And you're going to spend lots of time doing it and be happy doing it rather than being in a soul-sucking job that you absolutely hate, but you're trying to bank all this money but you're miserable every day. To me, that just doesn't make any sense. Life is short. You want to be happy doing what you're doing. So connect in with what you really love and what your skills and talents are. All right. He goes on to say, to get success, you must have dreams and goals of your own and being driven to see them through. Self-made millionaires have ambitions and are willing to take risks to make those happen. They are passionate and relentless in their mission to succeed. Set highly defined short-term and long-term goals with strict deadlines, and you have to frame out exactly what you want and how to get there. While most of the common people ultimately want to lead a comfortable life, self-made millionaires push beyond the average. They believe in creating their own opportunities. Be ruthless with your vision and be clear about what you want to eliminate from your current life and what you need to add over the next few years. All right, I want to pause there. I don't like his use of common people. I really don't like that. But let's just say most people do want to lead a comfortable life and self-made millionaires push beyond the average. So I'm going to reframe that sentence a little bit. Also, what I would say is what he described there with short and long-term goals with strict deadlines and framing out exactly what you want and how to get there is right out of the book Think and Grow Rich. 
So that is one of the things that Think and Grow Rich talks about is specifically talking about your goals and what you're going to give or do in order to accomplish those goals. So I definitely agree with his paragraph there that you have to have that focus and write it down and know exactly what you're doing by when and what you're giving in order to achieve that goal. Number three, see the big picture. Expand your focus from the short-term success to the bigger picture of how you want your life to be shaped. Keep your eye on the biggest, most motivating reward and let yourself be continually driven and inspired to achieve that. Set bigger goals for yourself. Choose something that is not easily achievable, something that will make you stretch your faculties to the maximum. All right, well, I like that, that you're stretching for a big goal. That is, in other words, think big. And when I was younger, I read lots of books about thinking big. And I used to work for someone who said, think big and add a zero. Meaning if you're thinking big and you think a million dollars is big, add a zero to that and make it $10 million as your goal. So as long as you're shooting for the stars, you may as well make it a really big goal. Number four, take calculated risks and persevere through failures. While the middle class lives in fear of risking too much, often content to stay in their lane, millionaires strive to move out of theirs and know when to go for it. Ordinary folks do not go beyond their comfort zone so as not to upset the milk cart, but the fact here is that without taking calculated risks and overcoming fear, you would never become a millionaire. You need to take calculated risks to be a self-made millionaire. When deciding whether or not to take a risk, Ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario? Evaluate the costs versus reward probabilities before jumping in with both feet. If you can anticipate the worst outcome, you can survive the odds. Millionaires overcome fear with knowledge and educate themselves before taking risks. And then they consider the consequences of failing. They calculate the intensity of the risk versus the power of the reward. If you can survive the worst that could happen, and if the most likely thing to happen will get you closer to your goals, then go for it. I want to pause there and say what I like best about that was talking about moving outside your comfort zone. That's something that I really believe, but I haven't talked a lot about. But I definitely feel that to be true, that in order to make progress, we have to move outside of our comfort zone. We're going to have to learn new things and do things for the first time that we haven't done before. And that requires being uncomfortable. It requires stretching and reaching and using that discomfort to grow as a human being. So I really agree with that. I also want to say that usually we hear making your first million is the hardest. I've talked about that before. And it's the hardest because oftentimes we don't really believe that we can make a million. So we have to prove to ourselves that we can make a million. And then once you've done that, the second million is so much easier because you've already done it. So now you believe it and you're not dealing with a lot of mindset blocks and disbelief and skepticism and doubt and negative self-talk and things like that. Number five, keep your thirst for knowledge lifelong, be more innovative and embrace change. One of the main secrets of self-made millionaires is that they are passionate learners and their learning curve actually has been shown to go up after formal schooling rather than flattening. They are voracious readers and always remain eager to know about the world around them. They reinvent themselves and their business on a regular basis as the market and technology changes. Invest in yourself first, even if you know nothing right now. Instead of resisting every change, figure out what caused it and move forward by creating a solution that capitalizes on the new opportunity. Well, I definitely agree you want to invest in yourself. Warren Buffett said the most important investment you can make is in yourself. Number six. Shift focus from spending to investing. You can never build wealth if more money is leaving your wallet than what is coming in. This is especially true for a salary earner who aims to become a millionaire. You don't need to earn a lot of money to become wealthy. It's what you do with that money that matters. The rich don't spend money, they invest. They count every penny and put it in somewhere productive. The worst you can do in your drive to become a self-made millionaire is to spend your earnings. 
You have to develop the habit of buying what is an absolute necessity of life instead of spending on pleasures. You have to draw up a plan of what percentage of your profits to plow back into your business and what percentage to invest into other things. To summarize, having a lot of money to start with is not a prerequisite to becoming successful or extremely wealthy. The only way to become successful and have that success translate into wealth is sheer hard work and grit, the ability to take risks and make the most out of opportunities that come their way. This is what separates the normal folk from the extremely successful. It is important to remember that all the successful self-made millionaires had something special that set them apart. Either they were gifted with that talent or they acquired it through sheer hard work. End of article. Well, I agree. You have to go from spending to investing. And that's where in the six steps to wealth, I talk about saving your nest egg and then investing in a money engine. Step four, what rate you do that is up to you. In other words, some people are trying to save every single penny and don't want to spend even a cent. Other people are giving themselves a little bit more slack and room and a bit more moderation, which is what I like to see. Because ultimately, it's the investing and the compounding that's going to build the wealth. Now, the more money that you can invest and start that, situation and get the money engine going is certainly going to be to your benefit. But the reality is it's the compounding rate that is going to create the wealth. Warren Buffett has been compounding at a long-term rate of about 20% now. And so it's his compounding rate that made him one of the richest men in the world, not the amount of money that he started with. The other thing I want to point out is that We all have some untapped ability within us. We all have talents. We all have strengths. We all have passions that we love to do certain things or hobbies or interests. And those things are often things that can be monetized. He gave several examples in just this article of that being true. So what I would say is look at your strengths And if you're not sure what some of your strengths are, take the test by Marcus Buckingham. He wrote a book about your strengths and following your strengths. And I really think the best idea is to use your strengths and develop those into a business if possible by starting with a side hustle, doing this gradually, and then being able to move into it full time. I reference some of that ability in my book, You're Already a Wealthairist, Now Think and Act Like One. Here's what I said on page 17. Will you choose to develop your potential? A tree seed will grow when planted and watered, and the potential for a large, glorious tree already exists within the seed. It is a law of nature. You also have inherited the potential to realize your inner wealthairist a confident woman with success and wealth. Now it is up to you to add the water that creates the beautiful tree, the decisions, determination, and actions to become a millionaire. Your life is what you make it. It is up to you what you do with it. Are you holding yourself back and letting your seed of potential lie dormant? Or are you developing it into a beautiful flowering tree that creates an abundance of seeds and your beautiful wealth heiress? I think when our life is over and we reach the pearly gates, we may have to account for how much or how little of our potential or talents we used. I imagine a conversation with God that goes like this. Person, hello, God. God, hello. Tell me about your life and why you chose the life you did. Person, what do you mean? I lived the life you gave me. God, I would have given you anything you believed you could be, do, or have. Why did you choose so little? Why indeed do some people choose so little? Why not go for it with gusto and reach for the stars? The decision is ours. Far too often, we do not try. We accept less than we should, and we don't realize the full splendor of our wealth heiress. Of course, we have doubts and uncertainty. Maybe we even lack confidence. But that has not stopped some women from having a big vision and working to make it happen. How did they do it? Are they geniuses? Born under a lucky star? Or have some magical advantage? No. Women achieve wealth when they gain knowledge, plan, work hard, and take action. Like a GPS tracker, 
they course correct when they lose their way. Examples of women who have achieved world-changing success provide a beacon for all of us as we activate our own wealth heiress. I will share stories of successful women entrepreneurs who are everyday people that have been able to create wealth. What they all have in common is they went for their dreams, took calculated risks, and developed their inner wealth heiress. Remember, she was within them all along. So is yours. She's just waiting for you to believe in her and take action. And men, that applies to you too, of course. So I liked this article. I thought it had a lot of interesting aspects. It reviews many of the things that we talk about on Be Wealthy and Smart on a regular basis. And it summed it up pretty well. But what was really interesting was I thought this article was really geared toward becoming a billionaire more than a millionaire, which is okay with me because what did I say? Think big and add three zeros now. I'll put a link to this article in the show notes and on my website so you can print it out or keep it if you'd like. I want to share with you something that happened last week that really touched me. One of our listeners contacted me on Facebook and this stood out to me. This really was an amazing story and I wanted to share it with you because I was just in awe. This is actually from a listener in Ghana. And he said to me, I finally was able to buy your book through a coworker who was in the US and was able to deliver to me your book when he came to Ghana to work. I've already read half of it and can't drop it to do anything else. Thank you for sharing your knowledge in investments. What's so amazing about that is you can't buy my book in Ghana. You can only buy my book internationally, as far as I know, on the Amazon UK site. Of course, you can also buy it in the US on the Amazon site and other bookstore sites. But he had to actually know of my podcast, talk to a coworker in the US, ask that coworker to purchase the book for him and have the coworker deliver it to him in Ghana. I was so touched by this. I just want to say thank you. This was the most amazing message. And I love knowing that my work is getting out there around the world and making a difference for people. So thank you. Thank you so much. And it super impressed me that it was a man that wanted my book and loved my book. I always love that too. So thank you. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit that subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.